Welcome to the African Sports Link and greetings to all of you that have tuned in. This new series sets out to shed light on African sports, particularly where we've been in the past and where we're going in the future. On the last episode, we relived the story behind the misrepresentation of Zaire during the 1974 World Cup and the dubious funding strategies of the late President Mobutu. There is no political motivation behind the series. Nevertheless, we mustn't ignore the actions of those responsible for making decisions in professional African sports. The Congolese Association Football Federation was founded in 1919 and became affiliated to FIFA in 1964. The team's first official match was on the 11th of April 1963 against Mauritania in the Lamartier tournament played in Dakar, Senegal. The DRC won the match 6-0. The national team appeared in the African Cup of Nations for the first time in 1965 and the nation had its first international success at the 1968 Africa Cup of Nations held in Ethiopia beating Ghana 1-0 in the final. The second continental title came at the 1974 Africa Cup of Nations in Egypt these results carried the year through to the semi-finals where they beat host Egypt 3-2. In the final, Zaire drew with Zambia 2-2. Therefore, the match was replayed two days later where Zaire won the game 2-0. Ndaye Mulamba was the top scorer with nine goals. As previously mentioned, Zaire were the first sub-Saharan African country to participate in the World Cup, qualifying for the 1974 tournament after defeating Morocco 3-0 in the decisive qualifier in Kinshasa. Though four years earlier, Morocco did qualify for the World Cup in 1970. At the 1974 World Cup itself, Zaire did not manage to score any goals and lost all of its games, but gave credible performances against Scotland and Brazil. However, their 9-0 loss against Yugoslavia remains one of the worst World Cup defeats. Poco a poco, uno tras otro, fueron llegando los goles. Yugoslavia ganó el partido por 9-0. Este resultado igualó el récord de goles. Amid the tension, there was a bizarre moment of African innocence. Labeled as a bizarre moment of African innocence, by commentator John Watson. Mwepu Ilunga's name was imprinted in history for all the wrong reasons. As Brazil lined up to take a free kick with star men Rivellino and Jezino over the ball, the defender broke free of the Zaire wall and kicked the ball upfield for which he received the yellow card. Many like John Motson watching on brushed this off as simple ignorance from a nation not known for their footballing ability. However, to claim Zaire did not know the rules of football is hugely discrediting to a decent side who fended off every other African nation to qualify and win the African Cup of Nations in the same year. 
in fact the truth about this act lies on the darker side of football history Zaire was under the rule of repressive Mobutu Sesiseko who was making big changes in the country he had changed the name from Congo to Zaire in 1971 after seizing power after recouping 1965 he ordered locals to use their African names and banned all clothing from the Western world. This led us to examine the diffusion and early development of football on the African continent. Much attention was accorded to illuminating the nature of the linkages between football's diffusion to Africa and the various forms of colonial doctrine and imperialist policy that were prevalent throughout the continent during the first half of the 20th century revealing that the game was featured in colonial exploitation and cultural imperialism Fever's limited role in mediating football's early growth in Africa and its subsequent reluctance to countenance Africa's lobby for a democratization of the game's global institutional and competition structures is extremely pertinent. The approach of the world governing body during the first 60 years of its existence was in many ways resonant of the missionary philosophy and at times elitist and exploitative attitudes that characterized the administration of the colonies by their European master. From 1992 to 1996, Zaire reached three consecutive Africa Cup of Nations quarter-finals. In 1992 and 1994 they were beaten by Nigeria and in 1996 they were beaten by Ghana country's name changed to the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1997 and the national team was rebranded. At the 1998 Africa Cup of Nations, the DRC, led by Louis Watunda, surprisingly took third place, beating Cameroon in the quarterfinals and host Burkina Faso 4-1 on penalties in their last match after scoring three late goals to encounter the match 4-4. What was so special about this game is that Zaire scored four goals in the last 13 minutes of this match, three of which were scored in just the last three minutes. C'est 
Augustinoc, vous avez cité ces Jeux africains il y a un peu plus de deux ans où une équipe venait 3-0 la 75e minute se fait rejoindre à 3-3. Là, heureusement qu'il y a eu le quatrième but de marche par les Burkinabés. Il va y avoir quelques arrêts de jeu. Je vous rappelle qu'en demi-finale, dans le match du Congo, il y a eu 9 minutes d'arrêt de jeu. Là, s'il y en a 3 ou 4, ils ont une chance d'égaliser à 4 partout, ce qui sera absolument phénoménal. Mais là, il n'y a plus de défense du côté des étalons qui ont cru trop vite avoir gagné ce match largement. Plus qu'un but d'avance en faveur des Burkinabés et nouvelle offensive peut-être des euh, Congolais. Ça que tu ça c'est le match de l'égalisation à quatre partout. C'est absolument incroyable. Et le débordement, ils sont tous dans la surface de réparation. Ils sont tous dans la surface de réparation. à quatre partout. Ils l'ont fait. C'est phénoménal. Il va y avoir des prolongations. Quatrième but pour euh, Lokengé. Mouvongo, ce son second dans ce match. At the 2000 Africa Cup of Nations, the team finished third in their group and the 2002 were eliminated in the quarterfinals by Senegal. Then in 2004, the DRC were eliminated after three straight defeats in group stages. And in 2006, led by Claude Leroy, Having finished second in the group behind Cameroon, the Congolese were eliminated in the quarterfinals by Egypt 4 1. At the 2008 African Cup of Nations, the Congo were drawn in Group 10 for qualifications alongside with Libya, Namibia, and Ethiopia. Before the last match day, the Congolese led the group but they drew 1-1 with Libya in their final match while Namibia beat Ethiopia 3-2. This sent Namibia through to the finals whilst the Leopards were eliminated. Notably, the DRC also failed to qualify for the 2010 World Cup. Though in 2009, the DRC won the African Championship of Nations a competition reserved to players in domestic leagues, a tournament they would again win in 2016. The nation also reached the 2013 Africa Cup of Nations finals in South Africa, but were knocked out in the group stages after drawing all three matches. Despite the Leopards' relative success in the African continent, the country have only qualified for the World Cup once, joined by Angola and Togo, who both qualified for the World Cup in 2006. It has therefore been 47 years since the DRC have qualified for the most prestigious football event on the planet. Notable Congolese players such as Shabani Nonda and Diemerci Borkani established themselves in domestic African leagues before creating successful careers in the European football market. Whereas Congolese national players like Harry Tailunga and Arthur Maswaku established themselves in Europe but chose to play for their native country, the DRC. There is also one more category of players of Congolese origin, such as Claude Makelele, who played for the France in 2002 in the 2006 World Cup, Vincent Company and Christian Benteke, Belgian nationals, and Steven Mandanda, the French national goalkeeper. To date, no African country has won the World Cup although the continent has produced some of the greatest players in the history of the beautiful game. Thank you for listening and join us next time where we explore the development of football in the DRC.